Hey friends, it's Nikki here with Stillwater's Wreath Designs. Let's make a Dollar Tree cross door hanging today. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new to my channel and you love all things wreath making and door decor, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We've got tutorials uploading each week for you. All right, friends, what you're going to need to start with will be one of the cross shaped wreath frames from the Dollar Tree. These are actually pretty long. Let's see if this says the length it does. I'm going to guess 24 inches, but let's just see. Yep, that's 24 inches in length and 12 inches in width at its widest point and probably an inch or so tall. And I'm going to make a farmhouse cross wreath today. And so what I've got with me now are just this wreath frame. I've gotten a package of um, natural twine. This may or may not be enough, we'll soon see. And of course I've got my glue gun and a couple of glue sticks handy. And my glue gun is heating up. Once we get the twine added to this, cross wreath frame, then we're going to add a ribbon and some florals to really complement it. I feel like this will be a pretty simple wreath to make friends. I think it's just going to be time consuming, lots of wrapping basically. So you can use whatever thickness you would like. I just really wanted something a little bit thinner. Uh, I felt like it would be easier to work with, but we'll, we'll soon see. And we're going to start from the outside and work our way in. So if you've got rubber finger pads to prevent getting burnt from glue, I would go ahead and grab them. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I typically just use my scissors to press things down. But you're definitely going to want um, some protective coating. And I'm going to start by actually tying this on to the frame. So I'm just coming near the crossbar. It doesn't really matter where you add this in. I just wanna anchor it down before we start gluing. So that we've got a good firm starting point. All right, and then just going to take my glue gun, run a bead of glue right on this outer bit. It's okay if you get glue strings, no worries. So I've added the glue and I'm just going to lay that there and give it, you know, 10 seconds or so to dry. And I'm leaving my twine guys right on the spool. I'm not really unraveling it because I don't want a hot mess to work with. And I've also not made this before, so we're trying this together and we'll figure out best techniques together. Okay, I think that's good enough. So what I'm going to do, friends, I'm going to always keep 12 to 18 inches of twine loose and wrap ready, but then I'm just going to hang on to my spool and wrap. And so this entire method, in my mind, uh, I'd like to just sloppy wrap this twine all the way into the center and then we'll come up to the top and work our way through the whole wreath adding some glue beads every now and again just to help anchor it down. So let's just start wrapping and see where this takes us. And again folks don't feel like this needs to be clean or neat or precise by any stretch of the imagination. And because it's thinner, as you can see, I'm not really going in any specific rhyme or reason. I'm just going to kind of go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So let's just take a couple minutes and wrap and see where this gets us. I'm going to take a pause here at the end, guys, and just put a little bit of glue just a pea size amount on each corner to really give this twine something to hang on to. Okay. 
So as we near the end of this first piece, guys, I just wanted to show you what it looks like. I'm just sloppily wrapping this twine around the frame. And honestly, I wished I would have gotten a little bit thicker gauge. I think it would have went quicker. I am gonna like the look of this, but it is taking a little bit more time than I had thought. So something to consider if you decide to make this as well. And basically I'm going to keep wrapping until I, I can't see through it anymore, nor can I see any of that frame. So I'm gonna keep wrapping. And then once we get to that point, I'll meet you back here. All right, guys, I'm nearly finished here. And as you can see, my strings are going around. They're going diagonal in both directions. It's really kind of a sloppy wrap, which is what I was going for. And now what I'm going to do, as you can see, I've crossed over once, but I'm going to take that twine and cross right back over and do the same thing on the other side. Just wrap, wrap, wrap with no rhyme or reason. And then once you get to these corners, of course, we'll add some glue and anchor those guys down. Just make sure you're pulling tightly to keep that rope taut as you wrap. And don't worry about those bars, friends. I've, I've decided we're gonna need just a bigger piece of the twine that I've got some scraps we're gonna add. Once you're pretty happy with your coverage, then we're gonna do just like we did before, <clears throat> come across the crossbar here, and now we'll do the top part of the cross wrapping whimsically and tightly just as we had done to the sides. You can go pretty fast through the majority of the spinning of this twine, but when you're at that quarter inch that's just before the edge, make sure you're spending a little bit of extra time getting it wrapped well and most importantly, tightly. So, so this is what it's looking like for me at this point, friends. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and I definitely like the whimsical look going back and forth, side to side. Just make sure you're pulling that tight um, to keep the good tension on your twine. I'm gonna work my way back down and then we're gonna move to the last um, piece here of the cross. So, I'm, I'm ready to come to the bottom. So I've taken my piece of twine, I'm pulling it underneath the cross, up and over this top piece, so that I've got some um, space to create that tension. And then I'm gonna hold it by the top part of the cross and then just start wrapping. This will be the hardest part, friends, because it's the longest part. So, you know, you've gotta just be able to really Get in there with it and work your way around, just like we did before. Just like the top part of the cross, friends, you're just gonna keep spinning that twine at no specific distance apart from one another or angle. You just want it to be kind of a messy, Look. So when we're doing the top part, friends, we're gonna go ahead and leave an open X here because we're gonna have um, the florals and the bow that we're going to attach. So <clears throat> we don't need to waste our time or twine on the center part. Plus we can also use these crossbars to anchor down our bow and our florals, but you do want to get your string right up to the edge, just like we did the other three pieces. So essentially we'll be boxing that in. All right, friends, we have finally reached the end of the proverbial rope here. And so what I'm gonna do is just run this through this cross crossbar here and tie it into a knot so 
so that we know it's good and anchored down. And then we're going to add some um, drops of glue as well to really keep it secure. All right. So let's trim off that bit. So what I'm going to do, I have this extra piece of wider gauge twine that I'm going to use to cover these ends. And so just eyeballing it, I'm going to figure out the length. Better to be a tad short than a tad long. And then I'm going to run a bead of glue right down that crossbar and add the piece that we've cut, being careful not to burn myself. And just pressing down with my scissors or anything, you know, other than my actual fingers. We sure don't want to get burnt. And we can trim off these ends. As you can see, they're sticking out a little bit. We can go ahead and trim them in a little bit once that glue is good and dry. So I'm just going to do that all the way around. Again, I'm going to eyeball the length. Cut it off. Run a bead of glue along that crossbar. Add that piece we've just cut. And then I'll use my scissors for a 10 second hold here to make sure it's good and attached. And we'll come back through and trim once they've dried. All right, that one stuck nicely. So same thing friends, I'm just gonna eyeball the length. If it's coming, if your spare piece or whatever you're using has come undone or is frayed, just cut off that frayed bit so that you've got a clean cut. All right, running the bead of glue. If you've got some twine already laying there, just glue right on to the top of it. It won't hurt a thing. Be really careful not to burn yourself here, friends. Now the end, at least on my piece, depending on how well you wrapped it, I did not do a great job as you can probably see. And so I'm going to put a piece on the top and on the, on the end for good coverage. All right, guys, once you've got all of your ends glued over, Double check and make sure you don't need any extra bits of coverage because it'll separate just a little bit. And if you're not happy with anything that you see, just add one more piece to cover. Once you're satisfied with all that um, extra bit of coverage, go ahead and sit your cross um, base off to the side to dry. And next we're going to uh, add some florals and a bow. All right, friends. So I'm going to make a simpler bow than I normally do because I really want to keep the focus on the cross. And of course I grabbed um, some purple or lavender florals. And I'm going to run the florals crossways on this cross, catty corner I should say. This bush I actually got from Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to, I've cut off two stems. I'm going to cut off two more so I'll have a total of four of these stems from this bush. And I'm going to run um, two at the top and two at the bottom. 
So I'm going to bunch them together going opposite directions like so. And we're going to end up placing them diagonally on this cross. So we need to make sure that they're not too long when we do so. So I think that'll look great. What I'm going to do now is grab some foral wire. Actually, I think I'll just use a zip tie today. And I'm just going to take a zip tie here and zip tie those guys right together so that we've got a bunch going both directions. Make sure that guy is really, really tight. Trim off that excess bit of zip tie. Woo, my goodness. And then we're gonna add it to our frame. And again, I'm gonna run it catty corner, like so, using again, another zip tie. You can also use a Chanel stem or some floral wire if that's easier for you. Whatever you've got handy will be just fine. And make sure that when you add that on, friends, that it's going across a crossbar so that it doesn't get slippery on you. And then I'm just going to run a couple of thick beads of glue here right over the florals, right over the zip ties to make sure they don't come loose. And while that's drying, love, 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 I'm going to go ahead and make a quick bow. And the bow today, I'm just gonna use one single pattern, friends, because I wanna keep it simplistic. And so I'm using this two and a half inch wired burlap and white striped. And I'm gonna use a tan Chanel stem to attach it to our frame because it's gonna blend really well. If you need help making a bow, I'm gonna go ahead and link my Bow Dabra tutorial below as well as how to make a hand bow so that you've got that to reference. And I'll just real quickly make this bow and I'll meet you right back here. All right, friends, we've got our bow made, and <clears throat> I'm not going to fluff it out fully until we've added it onto our cross wreath. And I've used a tan Chanel stem because I feel like it really matches this nicely. So I'm going to run that right over the crossbars here. Put that guy smack in the center. Flip it over. And really give that several super tight twists. And then I'm going to marry those two ends, just crossing over quarter inch over quarter inch, tying them together, or wrapping around, I should say, until I've got this nice little loop so that now we've got a door hanger for our door. So I'm going to go ahead and fluff this bow out a little bit. And then once you're done, you can trim your ends as you would like. I'm going to keep mine, I think I'll keep mine at an angle. And because it's wired ribbon, you can use your fingers to create some curl and some height. There we go, friends. I think that turned out beautifully. It's simplistic, it's country, and it's a great statement piece. It's exactly um, as I hoped it would be. I will make sure I take a picture of this hanging so that you can see what that looks like as well. 
Thanks for crafting with me today, friends. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you've not already subscribed to my channel and you love all things wreath making, be sure to subscribe. Thanks, friends. Happy crafting.